in a term of as a person your body is is not just flesh it's not just there's so much that goes into making who you are the energy in the frequency is a big thing so as a human being you carry you are a magnet of energy and frequency so if i am a guy and i am sleeping with a girl that is sleeping with a nigger that is going nowhere in life you as the woman life comes from you the whole life nine months it's a, it sounds like it's time but if you can understand it from a chemistry biological and spiritual point of view there's so much happening in you so your vagina is literally the birthplace or the tomb of everything things either come to life here or they die here podcast and chill Matt G, the ghost lady and len moleko Enda Varimini, welcome ladies and gentlemen to a live edition of Podcasting Chill. Uh, please welcome our special guest today, Scoop Marcatini. Uh, I know that some people might not understand this course, but it's very imperative or it's very important for me to start off with native language. So, Diabonga Kakulu, Kobuko Benu. Thank you so much for giving up your Sunday. Niti manize ba nizo balapa nizo mamela singogole. He's making me nervous now because he's so nervous. Got to get just uh, as the name says, man. Siya bonga. So thank you very much. Masi yeah. basibangen. Round uh, round of applause to you guys for coming through, man. Thank you so much, guys, for coming through. Um, reason why I had you right is because I, after your interview, bro, my mind was blown away. Your mind and your what is the thing called? Your numbers. <laughs> I see the numbers, nigga. Nigga, I saw the numbers, nigga. <laughs> Everyone else was like, yeah, maybe I could go chill with MacG and talk now. <laughs> and that's what we do it for, you know. Um, that's what you do it for. Everybody wants to always reap the rewards from their work. And sometimes just to be of service for someone else's dream is also work. You just always don't have to be working for yourself and for your accolades and for your applause. You know, if I had done that by myself, I don't think I would have had that reach. And people need to see black people working together more often. Yeah. You know what I mean? So thank you for that. Because I was afraid to say those things. The, and we didn't even plan that the interview was going to go in that direction. But it did. Yeah, I want to talk about bitches and stuff. Wanna talk, you want to talk about? No, I wanted to talk about bitches. And then you took it left field. Ah, you, we could have talked about bitches 12 years ago. <laughs> I'm done with bitches. I'm with the queen now. <laughs> uh, the feedback was crazy from my side. Like, even till this day, people speak about that interview. How was the feedback for you on your side? The feedback for Rim now was also crazy. It did two things. It made me aware that people sometimes don't know what they want until they are face to face with what they need. So when we talk about issues of African spirituality, African identity, it always comes from umlomo of someone that we don't identify with. And because dingulomdu ninguye, dingu scoop, you know, I love women, I love liquor, I love weed, I live a very outward life, very expression filled life for people to kind of see me in that spiritual light was new and it was great because no matter what you can't be just one thing and if you are just one thing then you should really be scared you are a human being who comes from a bloodline that has been here for more than three billion years if you know about universal collective knowledge, then your DNA has the knowledge from when the earth started till now. So you can never be one thing. And anyone telling you to be just one thing, but So it was great for me because um, they say that good interviews let people know who you're interviewing. Great interviews let the person know 
about themselves too. Wow. So instead of me just talking to people, I also got to find a little bit about myself. Yeah. And that was a great interview. All right, so we've got a lot of chillers here. If anybody has a question for school, please do grab a mic. Uh, first question, uh, just grab a mic and then, yeah, uh, you can ask him there. What's your name, first of all? Yeah, yeah, that's fine, yeah. Scoop, first thing, uh, I want to thank you uh, for everything you've done for the hip-hop here in South Africa. And go some fit. You have built a lot of careers. Um, you have motivated a, a lot of rappers here in South Africa. Lots of rappers have made it here in South Africa because of UMCs. Like your, your show on YFM changed a lot of us, you know? Like I remember back in the days, I was still in high school. I was in a rural area in Wamshabia Lingana. Um, rural areas is yeah. where the gems are, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rural areas are where the gems are. I used to listen to your show and I was like, damn, I wish I was in Jobek and I was like raping and, and so of. Unfortunately, I was still in high school. I was still in Is a number also, is a number also talking the question? <laughs> yeah, I'm still coming to the question. Please do. Yeah. We got. We don't have time. Okay. First thing. And you see how many people is here, nigga? Okay. Nigga, do you see how many people is here? <laughs> <laughs> nigga, ask your question. First thing first. I'm not too cool with taking compliments. Okay, okay, okay. But I, I'm down with questions. <laughs> first thing first. What happened to your Twitter account? Do you remember the day when he, allegedly your account was hacked and you were responding to someone who had child your girl or something like that? And you are melting on Twitter, and everyone was asking, "What is happening to to Scoop?" And then, like I, I still recall, in 2014, you once dated that, and you were replying directly to me that you will never date one girl. Mm. And then on that day, it was alleged that your girl was child, and pictures were posted. Hey, this guy's a tall guy, yo. Yo, yo, yo. Yes, dude. Okay, 30 seconds. Yo, Please wrap okay. it up. And, and, and then po uh, pictures were posted on the on, on, uh, internet that your girl was out with someone else. Okay. And someone who was using your account was melting, alleging that your girl was child. Okay, thank who you. was using this account? Was it you? And how were you feeling on the day? All right, thank you for the question. That day was... And secondly, secondly... What aye, 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 aye. Okay. Let's go, other gear, come, other gear, Michael. Um... There was no way I was going to come to a Q&A and not expect that question. So first things first, uh, my account was hacked. It happened on my... So you weren't willing to wait my, to hear my answer. And all the compliments you were giving to me were really bullshit. Because you really aren't here for the answer. You were really here to say what you wanted to say. And that's fine. No, no, and that's fine. And that's fine. That's fine. You understand? I also have to let you know that I know. Just like you think you know. I must let you know that I know what I know. You understand? So, it happened on my birthday. I never said those things. I would never put myself like that in any way about my personal life. I go to war about this industry. I go to war about apartheid. I go to war about racism. I go to war about a lot of things. My relationship, my family... I don't, post, I don't post pictures of my son. I hardly post pictures of my family. So my personal life is something I stay far away from when it comes to uh, volcanoes and eruptions on Twitter. I will erupt when it comes to this business, though. Secondly, that guy is someone who grew up with my girl. I know him very well. Someone took the picture and decided to do what they did. I don't know why. And your, I think your last question was, are you still with her? Yes, my nigga, I still am. Yeah. Yeah. All right, next question. No, I have another to now. To kick you out next question. <laughs> All right, next question. Does anybody else have a question? Just grab a mic. Uh, yeah, just come grab the mic here. Yeah. Yo, yo, what's up? I feel you. Um, you want to ask something, but you're too far, there, sister. You're too far. <laughs> um, I just want to know your opinion um, on mental freedom. For us black people, with the way the world is right now, the way things are going, do you think we will we'll ever, as a race, be ever mentally free? Thanks. Uh, that's why you ask a question, Chief. 
Don't worry. I mean, you have to you have to accept you have to accept either side. You know, I can't come here and only expect one-sided questions about how great I am. I haven't been great throughout my career, like you said. There were times where I've stated that I'll never date one woman. And that's because I grew up where my father had many women, whether it was lawful or unlawful. My dad had many women. My grandfather had five wives. So here I'm thinking like, yeah, no, for sure. I'm going to be a polygamist. Until you find and grow up that you grow up and find someone that changes your direction. No problem. Um, in terms of being free, sing abanda bamnyama. Lendo yokba free yabanda bamnyama. It's it's is there's a problem with it because we always put the freedom of ourselves onto people and leaders. And to be honest with you guys, kautule out yes kakangoku. To be honest with you, I sit and tweet a lot of things and I say a lot of things on many platforms. But I look at what's happened to a Chris Hani. I look at what's happened to a Steve Biko. I look at what's happened to a Bob Marley. I look at what's happened to a Malcolm and a Martin Luther. I look at what's happened to so many of our African leaders who when they say the things that should be said, we are, we are, we are there. Yes, yes, yes. And then the powers that be do something to try and halt our progression. The same people that cheer us on are never there. Like, like this man here could have asked a lot of questions. But he came here to ask that question. So, do you understand what I'm saying? You want to be free, but you want your freedom to be, to be led by someone. It can't work like that. Like, you guys have to take control of your black destiny. We have to take control of our black destiny. And every day goes by, sing I ends Londoleo, is every day we lose even more. Because we are already starting on a back foot. And I don't care what you think and how you feel about it. But I know you as a black person go home and you sleep and you are unhappy with the way things are. You are unhappy at work. You are unhappy with the language you need to speak at work. You are unhappy with the mannerisms that you need to have at work. You are unhappy that you need to spend nine to five those hours doing it for someone else. And in the back of your mind, you fucking know that you have an idea. You fucking know that there's blackness that wants to grow outside of you. But not that you don't want to, but you're very scared of it to happen. Because you're still placing your mental emotional and physical emancipation on a leadership that leadership is you i can sit here today and talk like this tomorrow if i there's a newspaper article that says i lost my home you guys will be this 90 percent of this crowd will laugh at me so let's not fuck around with one another and i've come here not to be exalted but to really be honest and really, 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 some people spread I, some people spread light in a candle form. I'm like a dragon. I want to burn shit down and then let new things spring off. So let's be honest. Like, you're not coming. I'm not your leader. I'm not going to fucking save you. I can't even fucking save myself. But the questions you have are imperative and they're important. And the only way, my nigga, you're going to answer those questions is if you start answering them living the life that you need to live for those questions. Not team, nah. Okay. Wow. I, I saw a tweet uh, the other day, and someone asked you, what is your South African dream yeah. for, like, us people, you know? Yeah. Black people, to be precise. Yeah. What is your South African dream? Would you expand on that? Uh, sure, it's hot in the motherfucker. Are we still going with the camera? Are we still going with the camera? Um, yeah, and I kumbula. Dam kumbula lombozo, I do remember that question. And um, I answered, my dream for the South African black people is that we get our land back, first of all. Because 
you don't understand this land issue. It's not about you building a big mansion. You wake up today and go to work to provide food, to pay bills. That's what you do. You wake up at five, six, four, some of you three, whenever that might be, it rhymes because I'm an MC. <laughs> A master of ceremony, not a rapper. <laughs> but anyway, so you wake up that early to provide these means of food and whatever. If you had land, you'd wake up to go tend to your chickens, to go tend to your garden. You wouldn't have to work for food because you are planting and building your own food. That's why the land issue is important. That's one. Secondly, I said that we will be able after this land to then work and, and have a way to practice our spirituality and culture with no interference. You cannot do traditional functions in your four ways house. I'm sorry. You cannot do them in your gated community. Even if you own a private standing house. You can't. And this is why again land is so important. If we can get our land back and we can get everything that's happening in this country, the degradation of women, the abuse of kids, the lack of leadership in men, all of these things are happening because you guys will follow every other fucking thing but yourselves. You look at Indians getting money. You look at Muslims getting money. A Muslim will never lose their shit. They wear the same clothes they do the same things that have been done by their grandfathers and their great-grandfathers. They own the same industry. The kids don't even go to school anymore. You have, when last have you seen a Muslim kid in class? They just go straight to the, to the family business, Indians. Because they keep their shit together. And the whole world is looking at black people, especially Africans. I can understand for America. I can understand for Trinidad and Tobago. I can understand. But in Africa, and when you go on Twitter and you talk about the fact that just, I don't, I'm not saying there's no God, but when you say, how can a black nation be so comfortable with seeing a picture of a white Jesus? The first people that will attack you is black people. You never get attacked by a white person. Like, it's, it's the epitome of stupidity. The epitome that you think the same color of the same person that oppresses you. How is this guy going to save you? When your oppressor is using the same book. Guys, you've studied adversity. You look good. You are able to do so many things. Why is this simple intelligence missing us? What are you so afraid of? Because the same person you're serving hasn't done shit for you and your people in how many years? But you go there with your heart out. You give that white someone who's going to come in a cloud descending from heaven with a big black book with everyone's name that has lived here on earth with marks going you've scored 60 percent of everybody get the fuck out of here man uh anybody got a question next question yep hey tater tater my name is Idumeleng. Uh, in the spirit of being honest and shit, uh, Twitter has been on fire the past two days or so about Prince KB allegedly poverty shaming uh, TNS on this very platform. So, in your opinion, right? So, I, I, I haven't been on Twitter for a minute. Yeah, so Sometimes KB. you gotta also take a break, huh? Just letting you guys know. Holla back, Sometimes agree. you gotta take a break, holla. So my, 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 my question, I, I wanted your opinions. And for, I don't know if you, you saw the interview of Priest KB on, the, on this podcast where he spoke about how he took TNS in and he basically gave him a startup, you know what I'm saying, and TNS did whatever he did. So 
the issue has been about uh, Prince KB being an asshole, about allegedly po uh, poverty shaming him, and McG being complicit in the uh, poverty shaming. So I just want to know in the spirit of being honest, do you think if I say this nigga came through, didn't even, he didn't even have underwear and shit, and I, I took him in and basically, you know, gave me a startup. Is that poverty shaming if Megji asked me, ask me a question and I give him such an answer? You know what I'm saying? Sure. Cool. I also want to answer you. Out of everything that my first podcast was about, is it a problem for me if I ask you, that's the question you have for me? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just asking also. I'm just asking also. Look, my G, it, it's all about the growth of this podcast, right? Yeah. So I wanted your opinion. As a, you, you're an opinion leader in, in a way. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, that particular insert on the interview has the potential to either make this platform or destroy it. I don't if, think that's true. If Meg G is perceived to be someone who's complicit. No, no, no. I don't think that's true. Yeah. Like, I heard your question. Yeah. Now you're explaining your question. Yeah. What I'm asking you is, from my first pod podcast with Meg G, yeah, yeah. do you think that question holds weight right now? <laughs> Absolutely. I wouldn't, be answer, I wouldn't be asking if I didn't think so. Okay. Yeah. Hey, shit, I'm going to stop laughing because it gets okay. me into shit. Eh? Okay. <laughs> I, will, I will answer your question for you. Have you watched my first interview? Yeah, I did. Okay. So let me answer for you. Your question holds no weight. Okay, but secondly, I will answer it. Mac G's podcast, there's not one thing. It wasn't built on one person, so one person's answer can't destroy it. Whether that answer is a right one or a wrong one. You are not built by one person. One person can never destroy you. Even a group of them can't do shit. Go on us destroy so in a tune with Prince KP, think I book a long podcast, Kayake. Maybe if you don't ask me a musical question on the podcast, and the ends are young cool. I'm here to talk about blackness, spirituality, and the way forward. Can we can we can we change for a, a new yeah? Can I can I ask someone else to do it, please? I'm also oh, saying that can I ask someone else? Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Hi, um, my name is Badziba. So, I, I, like, my question is a bit real. Like, what we, um, what's happening in South Africa right now is women are being killed and this and that and that. As a very black man that you are and very, you know, these are the solutions and stuff, what do you think we can do? Not the government, because clearly <laughs> that could, it's not going to happen. But what do you think as a community, as black and women, can do to eradicate such a, something like that? Like I said, ma'am, and, and they are over, and I don't take it lightly in uh, in terms of women. Um, I don't take it lightly at all. And, you know, my family was also very wary about me speaking about this in the beginning stages of my career. But my father, who passed away last year, March, there were three incidences that I remember him beating my mother. And the first thing that I always heard was, yo, if you've been around abuse, you're going to be an abuser. That was the wackest shit I ever heard. Right? Because I saw that happening, and the first thing I thought in my mind was, I never want to be like that. And in the same breath, I had a long-standing animosity towards Utatawam. It took a while for us to get back to good books. And it took me growing to learn that no matter what anyone does to you emotionally, you don't have to pay anyone back. That if you keep your dignity and carry on, you're doing a great job. And your question, and I, I, I said this before, and it's the one, th you see, as black people, you guys are, we, let me not say you, let's say we, we are very, scared of doing the things that are really the most important and that matter. We really are. And I don't know why. You have to answer that because I think for everybody it's different. 
whether it was television, whether it was upbringing, whether it was school, but there comes an age where you can't blame it on those things anymore. And like I said, my sister, until black people in southern Africa return to their ancient knowledge. Ancient because it comes before you, but it is not prehistoric. It's ancient because it's older than you, but it doesn't mean it doesn't live in these times. Until we can get that shit back together, you're not going to fix this country. The old men that are running this country, you have fights with your mother and your father. You look at them and observe things like, your dad will never say sorry. Your mom can't say sorry. Doesn't it look like the government, the same people that can never admit when they're wrong? Because you have to understand, these are the same people that grew up under the same system. It's the same people, even though they have control of the country, they are still scared of a white person. <laughs> Just like we are. We sat in the same tables with them, but we, my lady, you can say that now, and I can never verify it, right? So, yes, and I can still never verify it. So what I'm saying also is in amongst all of us. We're still the same people that have the same problems. Askwazi uchonga umlungu organ uchonga umnomnyama and do it and say what you have to do. Because there's, there's like 90% parts of you that you don't know. You've been filled up with mixer drink when you are actually 100% pure concentrate. You are the orange. Upizutin with orange juice. Mm. Damn, the buzz, buzz. So, so unless, unless, unless you guys really revere your African knowledge, like you revere Shakespeare, like you revere Picasso, like you revere Gucci, like you love Louis Vuitton, like you love all this other bullshit, until you look at yourselves like that, you ain't going nowhere. And you're always going to be looking at niggas like me and thinking that we're special. And we're not. I don't have money. Nelson today bought me data. I don't have money. I join, pay my join, bills, though. Join the club, eh? I pay my bills, though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I pay my bills, though. My kid doesn't want for anything. My sisters, and they don't go to a bank. They come to me first. But I don't have the shit that you guys respect. If I was driving a Ferrari and I walked in here with a Rolex, you would respect what I'm saying. Most of you will only respect what I'm saying if I have these things. So until you learn to respect yourselves and love yourselves without white, a white veil on you, it's not going to be in this generation. It's not going to be in the next generation. You guys are running towards money. You're running towards the plush house. You're running towards taking photos in first class. You're neglecting going home and learning about your father, your mother, your grandfather, your grandmother. But you know everything about uh, GH Mom and Verve and Dom Perignon. You can even pronounce them. So get the fuck out of here with that shit. Uh, anyone... Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, Krang is on. Len, you got a question? Hi, my name is Len, in case you were wondering. <laughs> uh, Scoop, a couple of Come weeks on. ago, we, we actually had a conversation on the podcast about tribalism. Uh, it seems like we've come to a point whereby, as black people, when vendor people do a certain thing, we point to them as vendor people. When a certain tribe, as it were, the Sutus or Amakosa, do a certain thing or celebrate themselves, we, 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 we shun down on them or we speak down on them. Um, at what point did we get there and how are we actually going to bridge the gap to understanding that, yes, I am Kemosotu, yes, he is Venda Umkosa. He's a Zulu. But at, over and above that, we are black people and we are one. Yeah. 
we got there. Look, if you're looking for any answers as to a lot of things in Southern Africa, in the continent, you cannot escape apartheid. You cannot escape the racially implemented system that the imperialist has come with. I say imperialist now because now they've done such a good job that it's not them that are doing it anymore. It's our own people doing it to our own people. Because mm. yeah. the job has been well done. Mm. But you can't ask anything about the divination and the divide around black people without considering their oppressor. A huge role. The only role that was supposed to be played. Has anyone here watched Hidden Colors? Guys, if you can do it, please watch Hidden Colors. There are five parts to it. These things explain everything. So we got here, dog, because it was a systematic... They, because before it was like this, it was the opposite of this. And the opposite of this was unity. Even though there was we always noticed these things about one another. But there was more unity than divide. Now the imperialists came, noticed what we noticed about each other and made it into a weapon. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you cannot, you cannot... Ghana was the first country to get emancipated in 1967, if I'm not mistaken. South Africa got it in 94. The equivalent of that is like, look at the firstborn of a family and how much they know and how responsible they are. And then look at how little the lastborn knows. How, how, how simple the lastborn thinks. And that's how simple we are. We are the last country to get emancipated. So all of these things that didn't work in all these other countries worked here. And again, all these questions that you have, guys, you know the answer. Start being what you want to see. You don't need me to tell you that. You wake up in the morning... You do stupid things like, I'm going to holler at all the 11 tribes. All the, it's 11 languages, nine ethnic tribes. On my timeline. I'll pick one. Then after the tribes, I'll hit the countries. Simple shit. Like, yo, I want to start my own business. Let me go on YouTube or Google and register my company. You do these things for everything else in your lives. But you don't do it for your blackness. Then you want people to do it for you. It can't work like that anymore. It just can't. I don't know it, my nigga. I don't know it. But one thing I know is that I'm tired. I'm tired of being what I hate. I'm tired of speaking what I don't like. I'm tired of doing what I don't like. I'm tired of being around people I don't like and smiling. I'm tired. And I've got to raise a kid. Now, I'm going to do these things and raise this kid, but I'm doing these things. It's like me smoking and telling my kid not to smoke. What the fuck am I thinking? The kid doesn't hear what I say. They watch what I do. You guys are speaking about success and freedom and everything, but everything else you're doing is shackles. Because hmm. do- everybody's just scared to lose the comfortability. Everybody is scared to go back to the hood. Everybody is scared to really, really start from zero. You want to live next to the white person. You want to drive the same car they drive. You want to be liked by them. Let's be honest. It would be rather you liked by a white person than be loved by your own family. These are facts. And even though you deny them, your actions say more than your denial. When you look at other races, uh, what do you think we can learn from them and implement, them, implement it for our own race? From the white race, for what I'm studying through African history, yes, you hear about us running shit, and we did run shit for a long time. These white people were very, 
very patient and they planned they saw things and they were like and that's another thing that I I love about them is and that's what puts me and gives me oomph because where I'm sitting I ain't shit my nigga where I'm sitting I'm like fuck how am I going to win as this person that I am and then I think wait but once upon a time this whole world was run by black people and it took one white person to go I want to change this and they started with propaganda they started with millions of things which is why I tweet the way I do because I'm doing my own propaganda Hitler almost wiped out the whole of Europe and made it Nazi Germany of propaganda often the world is run by ideas these are not fixed things. They are, I, someone woke up and went, hmm, what if I said this and did this? So as a black man myself, if I'm trying to change things, I have to start with that process of thinking. So from the white people, it's definitely having the fucking balls to think that you are going to run shit and having the patience to implement a system of running shit. From the Muslims, <laughs> it's never losing your tradition. From the Chinese, it's never losing your tradition, but also being able to live in a Western world and copy the Western world and become better than them. Copy and master. Copy and master. They, they make a Rolls Royce. They make you know, cars. They make fridges. They make fake shoes. I think the, the fake Louis Vuitton market gets more money than the real Louis Vuitton market. <laughs> Um, from the Indians, it's Ubushishini, uh, enterprising. And that's where I'll leave it for now. And, and, and we have to learn. We have to. We can't sit here and be like, yo, we were kings and queens once a grand. We have to learn. And the last thing that's left is if we take this African knowledge and come, like the Chinese, and combine it with this western world not combine it but infiltrate this western world with our african knology our problem is that we've adapted too much anybody else got a question if you emulate you will adapt and you adapt because you've emulated yeah So, me now my problem is I'm the where well, there's two black people where I work, and I'm also tired. Like, I'm tired. But my problem is we as black people don't support each other, and it like it it irritates me a lot. Like I was telling my friend Manji, they like you love Manji, like you're a follower. I'm like that's the thing, guys. He always gives about black people platforms. He understand the Wuti. Come, let's unite. Let's do this. When you listen to your podcast, like, he'll always say, Wuti, start a business. You can come. If you have a catering company, come through, guys. Do this. So I want to make a difference, me, myself. Like, Wuti Wuti Hitler was the only guy. And he made a difference. I want to do that because I'm tired of being a slave. My dad was a slave. My mom was a slave. My grandparents were slave. I don't want to be 40 and still work for a white person. Like, I'm tired. They make comments. Like, obviously, like, I'm at a point where I don't even speak fluent English anymore. I went to a macro. They're like, no, it's a macro. I'm like, eh, hey, a macro. I can't even pronounce my name properly. I'm not going to say Megan, Megan. That's how I talk now because I'm irritated. Like, working with white people makes you realize and love your blackness so much. Like, I walk around with my Afro in 17. I don't care. Like, you... Ish. I can't explain it, but... I feel you. Trust me, I feel you. You walk there... All you see is white. There's two black people. The other one trying to be white, and I'm like, God, nigga, like, you black. Like, like, be who you are. You know, and that, it will make you, like, appreciate being black. I don't want to have a white wedding. But because you try to build something, and I, my sister, I hear you, ne? Like, I hear you. We, it has to come to a point where you have to stop looking at the negative because where we're starting off also you're gonna you're gonna receive negative 
Like, you're, you're not going to be soulful, happy with an afro coming from macro. And everything is going to be smiles. It's going to be resistance. It has to be. It's just the way it is right now. But you cannot wake up and think, oh, because I'm facing resistance, I'm going to stop. If that was the case, half of the people who are doing what they are doing, they wouldn't be where they are today. And now, coffee, Nelson, Latoma, Drake, nigga, you can't sing and rap. Kanye, producer rapping. There's so many examples. Why are you going to sit there? The, la- the other thing I like to do is read autobiographies. Okay. Autobiographies. Books about people's lives. A biography is if he's still alive. An autobiography is if they've passed away. So I read that because there, there you can see roadmap. You can see what Robert Savuko had to go through. You can see what Steve Biko had to go through. And oh, Lamajita didn't die with as much money as Nelson Mandela. But they did the most work on a black mental tip, which is why they were eradicated first. With less resources. So, as a person that I am, I love clothes, I love shoes, I love American culture. I started making a lot of money. Then I realized, fuck, if I continue down this rabbit hole, there will be no Siabong and Gwekazi left. There will only be scoop. Hmm. Which is why I put a Makatini onto the scoop. Because I was like, I need a reference of where I'm from. So if anyone else, because I knew I was going to be world famous. I knew that. Okay. And I was like, yo, I need someone to know that I'm from South Africa, from Africa. But if I had not left the money, had not left the notoriety, had not left the comfortability, and reached into this Africanology, it would be sad for me. And I sit here today, I've got dreams of getting into a private jet. I've got dreams. I mean, I've been in a private jet. I've been in Rolls Royces. I have dreams of owning them myself, not to just sit in them. And I have to sit and think, yo, do I think I'm going to get there with the shit that I'm talking? But at the same time, yo, the shit that I'm talking has to be said. No matter how it's received. Because the last thing I can, be, I can do, unquasi, I cannot go to my son and tell him to do things and be different if I am not willing to do those things myself. How can that be? How am I going to raise a revolutionary when I even done one revolutionary act myself? So, leave people. Leave it. Because every answer you want is here and is here. But you're just so scared to say it because if you say it, then you're going to have to do it. And if you do it, then you're going to have to keep it up. And if you keep it up, it might not end up as your heavenly result. And you have to be cool with hell sometimes. Fuck the shit of you guys wanting to be comfortable. This is why we can't move. Because we want to be able to buy that perfume at the end of the month. That shoe. We want to go to Cape Town. It's going to come a time when you guys are going to have to stop. If you really want change. Uh, you had a question, bro. Uh, can you give him the mic there? Hey, yo, man, how you doing? Sweating like a motherfucker, but it's good. <laughs> Um, so I'm hearing everything you're saying, right? Um, when you're looking at change and the change that's required for us to really experience what needs to happen and where we need to be, do you think that this change that is required can happen through a democratic state or through the democratic actions? Or do we really need to actually say, fuck this shit, let's take up arms and let's fuck this motherfucker? Because at the end of the day, right, I look at, I'm in corporate, and I look at everything that these guys have uh, amassed. There is no way they're giving that up, saying, hey, man, we know, what, we know what has happened for the past 200 years. There you go. Here's half of it for free. Have it. There's no ways. Every time you go to a lodge, you go to a farm, all these things. 
you see how much they have, they will never give that up freely. So do we need them to... Like South Africa, South Africa is, is, is very different in the sense that we haven't had a civil war or shit like that, right? So do we then, for, for us to experience the change that needs to happen, do we then need to go to that stage of saying, fuck this shit, civil war, fuck everything? That's a good question, my brother, and I've wrestled with it a lot of times. Um, Malcolm X said that you cannot be given freedom. You must fight for it. And I always used to wrestle with that statement like for a long time, and I finally understood it later in my life. Imagine... I have a whole apple tree here. And every time you ask me for an apple tree, I give you an apple. You're going to think your whole life that an apple is the whole tree. Which is why you can't be given freedom. Because if I give you freedom from an, an, a position of oppressing you, I'm going to be rationing you. Like, no, 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 you just give them 10 rand now. It's like an allowance. When it's something that is our birthright, now we are being given it like an allowance because we didn't fight for it. And all these powers that run things, they fought for them. Mm. And that's where the Bible is a problem because the same people who came with weapons to get your land came with this Bible that says you mustn't fight. But they killed for it. Then after they killed, to maintain the order, they're still using the same Bible. So, you cannot be given freedom, you must fight for it. That's one. Number two, I also know that you cannot fight a system from outside of it. I've tried to fight the system from outside for many years, and that will leave you looking stupid. It will leave you depressed, I don't know about broke, but you know what I'm saying? Again, because of, you see, where he's headed straight to the money. We talk about revolution, he went straight to the money. Do you guys get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first thought was broke, the money, which is what I was saying. That if you're not willing to leave the comfortabilities, leave the freedom alone. If you're still being scared of being broke, then you're not going to get emancipated. You won't start your own business. The first five years of you really starting a business, you will be fucking broke. You will sleep on people's couches. So if you're worried about being broke, then you're already broken. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> I hear what you're Damn. saying, right? Damn. Yo. <laughs> so... <laughs> So so I, wasn't, I, wasn't also, I wasn't also finished, yeah? Because like, it sounded like w when I said that, no, 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 I want you to finish your, your question, but I was wanted to finish my answer. Okay. As much as I came from a very um, combative mind state on some, let's fucking war. Let's go to war. It's the only way. I think now we... I think, I'm not sure, I think we can achieve our freedom with our smarts, and yes, we can still go to war, but war with our minds and our culture. Okay. With that said, as a country, as black people right now, you know that the African people have got a war um, university yeah, where their kids get trained. Because they still think We're coming for them. they're coming for this country. Mm. Yet we are going, ah. <laughs> <laughs> we have arrived. Yeah, bro. Yeah. We just want to fuck around the colony, see you. <laughs> <laughs> so, and if, if, if niggas were to be in a war today, yeah. niggas can't run. True. Niggas can't shoot a gun. Shoot a gun. Niggas can't throw time. a punch. We, so even, and even if we do get to war and win things over, yeah. we don't even know how to run shit. So I just want to add on to what you said, right? Because I caught wind of that one part of saying winning the war from within. And with that said, so 
as someone who's been in there for like, let's say five years, I'm a fairly young man and I've been there for five years. The ideas that I had when I went in, into this white world, into this corporate world of dog eat dog world, right? And now I'm in there and with just five years of being in there, I'm already jaded and I catch myself being jaded and saying, you know what, bruh, I will never win this fight. I'm the only black man in this boardroom or whatever doing all these things. Fuck everyone else. And we see these things around everyone else, all these older black men who've made it and who don't want to empower us, who don't want to mentor us, because they went in there saying they want to win the fight within. But it's very easy to get jaded. I mean, look at our politicians. They are jaded now because they fought so far. They've so been now. jaded. Exactly. They've been jaded. So we, how can we say we want to win the fight from within, knowing that when we get in there, they do their utmost best to divide us and conquer us and eat at our emancipation mentally. Then we, we, I always said this, and also it was like, it was a, a light bulb moment for me when I realized that, my nigga, politics did not bring you into this world. So politics will not free you in this world. It's your mind. And as stupid... Also about reading books, you learn how things were done. You know, things were done very simply back in the day. They, how many societies do you know of today? Just like a writer's society, a poet's society. We don't even have those things anymore. And what I'm trying to appeal to is, if you think about it in that scale of politics and you Dog, that it's it's meant to deter you. It's you. It's meant to ukiafisa. It's, it's like walking up to a giant and you're like, <sighs> you you energyless. But trust me, I'm going home today, and I'm gonna be thinking to myself, God damn, you know, I really need to read more. I really need to implement what I'm doing more because you guys are here. We need to meet like this. You need to start. The smallest thing you can do amongst your friends, amongst your family, do that. I know it sounds stupid, but it's the only way you're going to win. And beyond winning the whole system, you've got to win yourself first. Everybody's trying to win the system and be better, but no one's trying to win inside. No one's trying to have the battle inside of being a better version of you. A blacker version, not a better, a blacker version of you. And like I said again, you can go to this God in heaven with his son, Jesus Christ, who is going to descend. You can pray to this person for so many things until you get back to your blackness and understand that our war will be fought for if we go back to our culture. The, the people that white people killed, they are around. Your ancestors are around. But they can't hear you if you're referring to them as Jesus. Mm. It's not Jesus. It's not St. Paul. It's not St. Peter. So it's almost like you are a child. You are crying because you're hungry. And you're busy calling your mother, but you're not calling. Your mother's name is Non Sapo. And you're, being, you're saying, Esther, Esther, please, Esther. Your mom is like, who are you talking to? You, words and what comes out of your mouth are very important. That's why it's called spelling. It comes from casting spells. Hmm. This is in books, people. So... Until we get back, we, we, don't even, we won't even have to lift a finger if we go back. Which means going back to your roots. You won't even have to lift a finger. I, today, I got these many adversities. But honestly, I don't lift a finger and a lot of shit gets done. A lot of shit for me gets done. In ways that I never thought. In ways that I never knew. I was scared to be this person because of this. You think it's easy leaving 40 grand a month? Damn, dog. <laughs> 40 grand for 30 minutes of talking. And I had to say, fuck this, man. 
I'm not going to get it like this. Uh, guys, we've got about 10 minutes left because uh, you got to leave. you got to show, man. Yeah. Uh, it's 20 past 5. You're leaving at half past. So I think let's take the last few questions. Can you just make them brief? Uh, yeah, what's your question? I mean, I've been talking a lot during your past co- podcast. Yeah, no, she be like, I'm not doing that, You know why? Uguti, you make a point, Uguti. You left your job, Uguze, Uguze. Speak on the mic, my brother. You left your job, Uguze. You become the pers- you, person you are. It's 40,000 rands, guy. We are not used to 40,000 rands. As you try it, we are able to... For 30 minutes of work. That's why I went to broke first. I'm also in the chain you are. The less you assimilate, the less out of the system you are, you become. We have learned English. That's why I went to broke. You prove my question by saying, Uguti, when I said broke, you left 40,000. It's 40,000 at the end of the day for 30 minutes. We are even ending a show. Uguti. It's, it's just that your words, words are important. Like I say, I'm a karma. In the Pumem Lonyeni, I balegi leabo. So in Daiva, in Lujoyo, it's just a choice of the spell you put on me. Is what I was willing All to right, can, you, can you get a question from someone at the back there? Someone wanted to um, talk to I just want to also add something. Um, um, Someone told me today, you know, I was talking to Nelson and I was asking him. Uh, Round of applause for Nelson, guys. Nelson, my, oh, Nelson, they don't even know who Nelson is. No, I think they know Nelson. I don't think they do, bro. Wow. Some of them do, but the majority don't. Nelson, um, you just just Google Nelson Makamo. Yeah. Exactly. The world's famous. Yeah. Oprah knows who Nelson is. So I was talking to him today and he was saying. You know, I was asking him, like, how did he always know it was going to be the way it is today? Like, in terms of his success and his notoriety, did he always know and what kept him going? Um, And he said something that was crazy. He was like, I never thought about money because I never came from it. Hmm. So, how can I then think money is going to make my life better when I had a dope life without it. And I, I won't lie. When I was growing up, we didn't have a lot of money. But I was happy as a motherfucker. A- and I never needed a lot. Today, I've got everything that I've ever wanted in my life. And I'm not as happy as I was when I was younger. Crazy. That's crazy. Like, this money thing, I understand it's hard also because you're on this gram. And it's, it's even harder when you have a best friend, maybe, and then your best friend makes that million from selling out, and you still want to keep the trophy and keep the light going. Things get harder. But I understand. I'm not saying that I don't understand your positions when it comes to where you are in terms of thinking about this money thing. But I'm saying that that money thing is the seed and the root of why you can't move. All right, cool. Can you get to the last question? Because we're running out of okay. time. Um, hi, my name is Paello. Sure, this uh, one. Paello, that sounds like a dish from Mozambique or yeah, Paella. Paella. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, Paiola. I'm just gonna divert a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. <laughs> anyway, I'm just Yo. gonna divert a bit from what you're talking about because um, on the episodes that you had with um. Mabena, you spoke about sex and abstaining, not abstaining per se, but not having a lot of sexual intercourses with people and 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 and. But then it resonated with me because I was already in that journey, but I was not sure what it was because I was referring to the Jesus side of things and whatnot. But I was not sure in terms of the ancestral, you know, history in terms of not having sex before marriage or not having too much intercourse with, not too much intercourse, but just, you know what intercourse is. You know almost what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's, I wanted, <laughs> I wanted to understand that in depth because mm. I have been abstaining mm. and I've seen differences. No niggas from, in the room just went, you where know is what she? I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just wanted to say this because I feel like it's going to relate to a lot of us in here because we're just having sex and you pray for things, you want things, but then you don't understand you need to fast 
you know, fast from it. But in, in, in terms of fasting, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Sure. Should I be praying? Is there sure. a God? How do I attack the celibacy part of one's journey, if sure. that makes sense? And, uh, you know, for me, it was very difficult because growing up amongst, like, hip-hop music and rap, like when Lil Wayne say, I wish I could fuck every girl in the world, I, I was a, I, I was, I was, I am good at fucking sort of like, <laughs> that too. <laughs> I am good with the hip hop shit because I really, really believed everything these guys said. I lived by their code, even sometimes more than they did. So I was really into just the hip hop life of fuck bitches. Do you know what I mean? And when I got to become spiritual again, I realized how wrong that was. Also in a term of, as a person, your body is, is not just flesh. It's not just, there's so much that goes into making who you are. The energy and the frequency is a big thing. So as a human being, you carry, you are a magnet of energy and frequency. So if I am a guy and I am sleeping with a girl that is sleeping with a nigga that is going nowhere in life, you as the woman, life comes from you. The whole life. Nine months. It's, uh, it sounds like it's time, but if you can understand it from a chemistry, biological and spiritual point of view, there is so much happening in you. So your vagina is literally the birthplace or the tomb of everything. Things either come to life here or they die here. So if you are going to be choosing dead niggas and putting them into your life tomb, what are you going to be? The child that's going to be coming from you, what are they going to be? The man that is sleeping with you, what is he going to be? Because it's energy. The people you hang around with, what they say, how they say it. These things are important. So for me, it was very hard for me. Very hard. It still is very hard for me to be monogamous. It's very hard. I can only express the truth. Because as a South African man, I'm telling you now, I'm probably one of the few that's willing to try. Because niggas in the... I'm not going to lie. South African women are gorgeous and there's more of you than us. You know, it's very difficult. But the, the, the results of... And it's not... Again, you will fail if you look at it from a physical standpoint. It's a very spiritual thing. And Elizwe is those two things. Once you start looking at this life thing in only your physical lens, you're going to fail. You have to enhance your spiritual side as well. Niggas be going to gym and six-packing, but they ain't six-packing up here and here. So, it's, it's, it's very important. It's not to say abstain, but it's to say choose people that are worthy to sleep with. Got me? How? Like everything, it starts with self. You've got to be in love and sleep with yourself. You've got to know the standards for yourself. Like me, I'll say, sometimes I won't wash for three days. So if a woman comes to me and they're like, oh, I haven't washed today. I'm like, that's cool, baby. I don't wash for three days sometimes. Those are my standards. You know what I'm saying? But everything, don't, don't look for answers outside, guys. Your answers are inside. You guys are looking for answers outside. No, your observations come outside, but your answers are from inside. So when you know how much you love yourself, when you know why you love yourself, when you know why you hate yourself, then you're going to pick a partner that you love and hate for those more or less same reasons that's worthy to be with you. 
but you can't choose people lower. And I slept with strippers, I slept with prostitutes, and I'm thinking to myself, fuck! What the fuck was I doing? Even if they were from Brazil, what the fuck was I doing? <laughs> you know it! <laughs> you know it! <laughs> All right, just in closing, Lynn, uh, you want to wrap it up? What's your question? Last question. Oh. Uh, Please make it quick, ne? No pressure. Tupac once said, I'm not the person who's going to change the world, but I promise you I'll spark the mind that will. Do you think you that mind? Definitely. I think um, I, I, I was young when I heard Tupac say that, and I was like, fuck, so that's it. You don't have to do it by yourself. You just have to create the ripples and then those people will take it on further. Unfortunately, with Park, it hasn't happened. I don't know if it's going to happen here. But it made me want to do it because I saw what I also did with television. Style, dress code, mannerism, influence on television. I was like, shit, if I can influence kids who never knew nothing about sneakers... How much more can I influence them with something they were born with, which is Africanness? So that's what I, I was like, shit, yo, yo, yo. I know a lot about this Jordan shit, and, but I need to speak on this African shit more. So I definitely believe that I might not do it. I think it's going to happen. But I also am very aware that it might not happen. Because they might find someone like me to replace me and all they have to do to that person is make them richer then the kids will stop listening to me that's it and that's what white people do they find a version of you make that person more wealthy so your people will look to this person nelson biko ani why do you think there's a street of there's a nelson mandela street everywhere in the world you don't see a chris ani street because nelson mandela served the interests of other people besides his own. It's just facts. It ain't even shots. I shoot basketball shots, but I speak facts. Wow. All right, so just in closing, Scoop, anything that you want to add, anything that you want to say in closing? Sure. Do you think we should have another one? Do you think we should have these more? <laughs> no? Okay. And I'm also, I think I'm very aware that uh, you're going to start doing this on a regular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Why, well, you want to do it for the podcast? No, I just <laughs> think we should have these more. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the podcast is ready. And that's another thing. I'm, I'm divide. you know, like I said, you, you're not just one thing. So I've done a good job of dividing myself. Yeah. Yeah, bo? Uh, I would love to do this a bit more and more and even bring other people to speak besides myself. But, like... You guys being here already, your spirit is already looking for the answers. Your body is hampering those answers. But your, you being here is a fucking win. On the real. You, you, the, the conversation that happens inside yourself without your mouth moving, without you even being awake sometimes, that's why you're here. But you're not going to get it from me. I can only show you where to look. You have to see the picture for yourself. And the picture that you see is up to your interpretation. Kotwa, just start doing it. Start doing those things that you're thinking of. It might not be being a revolutionary, but go and register that company. Go and do that shoot. Go and make that item of clothing. Go and write that first page of the book. Go and see your parents. Go ask your mom how they grew up. Go ask. Go see your, where your, your, your grandfather's land is. Instead of like, if you're going to wake up and go on Instagram, first start like first 20, 30 minutes just researching African history. It's on Google. You just type in your Stagazello and it comes with a whole bunch of shit. I type barely enter. I'll get to know a lot of things. And just stop being scared. Like, just stop being scared. Because 
it's more hell living in that fear. You, you, you're going to be haunted by what you are supposed to be every day. Rather fail at that than at not answering the call. Wow, man. Scoop, I just feel like I've been a part of something really, really great. Um, just want to say thank you so much for taking time to come chill with us, man. Thank you so much to all of you guys for coming, man. Give it up for you. Thank you guys for coming. Yo, thank you. Thank you. Eh, kiri zema stagwe ni manji. Podcast and chill. Matt G, the Ghost Lady, and Len Moleko.